Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be making a pulsating logo preloading animation for Squarespace. So basically that blank white page that you get before the page starts actually loading up, we're going to fill that with a pulsating logo or some other kind of GIF. So I've had tons of requests to make this video, um, to be honest with you, I put it off for a while because I thought it was going to be very long and very boring and uh, I just wanted to figure out the best way of going around doing it. So. If you've ever seen any of my videos in the past, you'll know that I don't usually give you stuff to copy and paste because then you wouldn't be learning anything. Um, but this video is different because the scope for this to go wrong is quite big. So what I'm going to do is leave a document in the comments. I don't know whether it'll be a PDF or a Word document or whatever. Um, I haven't figured out how I'm going to distribute it yet. So I'm going to leave a link to that. That's going to contain the script that we're going to use later on in the video. There's also another little step that will need to be done that's later on in the video as well. Uh, that isn't in the document to make this work. So, first off, we need to generate a GIF from somewhere. So, you can use sites like, bear with me, loading.io. It's very popular to have an IO domain name these days. Or free, pre, free preloaders.com. Um, there's loads of these sites around, so I'll leave a link to some down below somewhere. So, as I say, we need to generate a GIF. There's that way where you can generate a GIF from one of these sites. Or well, the way I'm going to show you how to do it is starting off in Photoshop, we're going to take a more personalised route. So we're going to get our logo, turn it into a pulsating animation and then make it into a GIF. So the first thing I'm going to do is open a new document. So we go to File and then New. And then I'm going to make this 200 by 100 pixels, 72 pixels per inch and on a transparent background. Now, the logo that I'm going to be using is horizontal. So if your logo is square, you could change this to 150 by 150 or 200 by 200, depending on the size that you want to make it. And then if we click Create, you see it's quite small. So I'm just going to zoom in by holding Option and scrolling the mouse wheel. There we go, that'll do. So we can see what we're doing. Next, I'm going to grab our logo. And then I'm just going to drag it onto the canvas. Hit Return to Place. And there we go, we're done with that little bit. So the next thing we need to do now is to start making the logo sort of pulsate, give it a pulsating animation. So if we go to Window and then Timeline, and then I want to click to Create Video Timeline. Now you might have Create Frame Animation selected by default. It's just a case of clicking on this little down arrow to select it. So if we click on there, and then you'll see that our logo is being placed onto this timeline now. So this is massive. I mean, this is five seconds long. We only want a short one second clip that we're going to loop around. So if we just grab the end of our clip and I'm going to drag this down to one second. Okay, with the clip selected, I want to make sure that the playhead is right at the very beginning. We're going to start adding some keyframes now to give it the pulsating effect by using opacity. So if we just click on this little arrow to expand the clip options, and then this little stopwatch icon here, this is to add a keyframe. So as I make sure it's at the beginning of the clip, I'm going to click to add a keyframe. Next, I'm going to drag along the timeline and I'm going to go to about seven or eight frames. So roughly there, that should do it. And then we want to click this little diamond icon to add another keyframe. And then I'm going to come over to the layers panel. I'm going to drop the opacity to about 50, 60. I think 60 will be fine actually. So back over to the timeline and then I'm going to drag this one right out to the end of the clip. Again, add another keyframe with this diamond icon and then back over to the layers panel and put the opacity back up to 100%. Okay, if we hit space, you see that that's playing our animation now. We're done with that part now. So what we need to do is to save it as a GIF. So if we go to file and then we want to go to export, Export for Web Legacy. And then I'm going to leave all these settings the same, but one thing I do want to make sure is that we've got animation looping options is set to forever. And then we just hit save. And then I'm going to just call this load and GIF. Nice and original. And then save. Okay, so we're done in that file. Upper. Okay, so we're done in Photoshop now. If we dive over into Squarespace, I'll show you how to set that part up. Okay, so first off in Squarespace, if you've got Ajax loading enabled, you might want to disable the loading bar. Um, this isn't necessary, it's just to save having possibly two loading animations take place at the same time. So to check on that one, if we go to Design and then Site Styles, 
and then under site loading if this is unchecked that's fine if it is checked just make sure that this show loading bars unchecked lots of checking so if we go back I'm not going to save anything there. And then while we're in design, we're going to upload our GIF and then we're going to get the URL for it. So if we go to custom CSS, manage custom files, let's just find our GIF. There we go, upload that. And then if we click on this, you'll see that the URL pops up in the custom CSS. So if we just take a copy of this, I'm just going to delete that and press save. Go straight back and then I'm going to open up the document that I left for download. So if we just open that up under this bit where we've got your URL, I'm just going to highlight that. So making sure that the quotation marks are left untouched at the end, I'm going to paste the URL of the GIF in that we've just copied. Next, I'm going to grab all of this, copy that. I'm just going to minimize that down and then we're going to go to settings, advanced code injection. And then in this header section, we're just going to paste all of that that we've just copied. And that is pretty much good to go. We just need to do one more thing to get it going. So what I'm going to do is come to the footer section. I'm going to do a left angle bracket and then div space class equals quotation mark. We're going to put loader. Another quotation mark, right angle bracket and square space chucks the close them on in. So if we just save that and then I'm going to maximize this out so we can see. And then if we just flip between pages now, see that we get our preloading animation going on so as always thank you ever so much for watching i hope you found this video useful if you did leave us a thumbs up below if you're not already please do subscribe for more stuff like this and yeah i will see you in the next video hopefully see ya